What's going on guys and welcome back to a brand new um, playlist. Basically what we're doing is we're starting a series that helps out small businesses, individuals, even large businesses that don't have the funding to completely um, buy some of these tools that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to get the licensing to actually prevent hackers. So what's the whole point of the channel or I mean of the uh, series? It is to teach you guys free tools that you can implement, whether it be on your personal PC, whether it be on a corporate environment, whether it be on a small business environment, wherever it is, that will at least give you the tools needed to start detecting hackers and preventing hackers. So whether or not this applies to you, it's good information. Even if you're a hacker and a pen tester, this is good information because you need to understand how people are also viewing your attacks. So if you've never done a red team, blue team engagement or a purple team engagement, you don't actually understand how they're viewing the attacks unless you've worked on both. So this is a good example. Now, before we get started, make sure you guys hit that sub button, hit that like button if you guys like this stuff. This I'm trying to give you guys the tools needed to help yourselves and help prevent hacking illegally because I think it's immoral and unethical. I wouldn't break into somebody's house and steal their stuff, so I won't break into your computer and steal your stuff. So let's go ahead and hop into it. So first things first, what we're going to do here is we're going to say get service. Now this is just to show you guys. You're going to see it runs. Now you can scroll up and look at all these different services. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that same get service, but we're going to save it. And the reason we're going to save it is because we want a baseline. So this is a brand new computer, brand new machine. We want to make sure that we know exactly what's running on this. So if in the event we think something happened, we think somebody might have access to this machine, we can go back and compare to when we first set it up. And this will eliminate 95% of you searching through stuff that you don't know what it is. So one thing we notice here is it cuts off the names. So we want those full names, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say get service again, but we're going to pipe this and we're going to say select object and we're going to say ex whoops, expanded property. Now what this is, is we're expanding the property and which property are we expanding? We want the name. And the reason is you saw that it's cut off. We don't want it cut off. We want the full name. Now we're going to say the out file, which is just what file we're saving it to the out file and we'll go ahead and we'll name this. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to actually go ahead and just get rid of the pipe and do this. And I know it's going to run and be, that's fine. But what we're going to do is I'm going to CD into this. I just want to make sure that I'm in the right directory so that this doesn't get saved in the wrong directory. So we're going to go ahead and do it here. So we're going to go ahead and do the name pipe out file okay and all we're going to do with the out file is name it whatever you want so we'll name it baseline services dot txt okay hit enter now let's look we have a baseline services dot txt now we'll go ahead and say cat baseline services dot txt and you can see these are all the services so what we're what we did is we got all the names of all the services that are running on this machine that means now if something happens, we can go back, whether they're running or not, even the stop services, the ones that are on the machine are sitting there. So now what we need to do is we need to look for scheduled tasks. So we're going to say get scheduled tasks. Okay. And then we're going to say same thing, select object. And we're going to say expanded pro property, not explained, expand property. And then we're just going to say the task name. Now you can just, if you're wondering how you get these expanded properties, you could just run get scheduled task in whatever property you want, whether it's the name, the ID, whatever you can do that. However you want, this is just a, a basic one. So we're going to say get task name and we're going to say out file again, file. And then we're going to say baseline, um, schedule tasks dot txt. We'll hit that. Let that run for a second. It's going to take a minute because it's getting all the baseline scheduled. So now if we say baseline scheduled tasks, we have all the scheduled tasks. Okay. Now we're going to do one more and we're going to say get 
local. Now you can do this with everything. You can do this with um, your network connections, everything. Once you have it set up the way that you want and the way that it should work with what you want, you can do that with network connections. Now the network connections are going to be a little bit trickier because there's always incoming and outgoing network connections. So it'll be a little bit harder to cipher through, but you can do this. So now we'll say get local user, select object again. And we're going to say do, 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 expand, expand property. And that's because it cuts it off if you don't. And we're going to say name out file. And we're going to say baseline local users dot txt. This should run pretty fast. Now, if we cap baseline local users, you can see there's a the admin account by default, the default account, guest, test, and there you go, utility account. So why is this important? Because when a hacker takes over a machine, one of the first things they're going to do is set up persistence. That's going to be with either scheduled tasks. Now, there's other ways. Just keep in mind, there's there's you can run them in RAM and things like that, but um, kernels, all kinds of stuff. But the main thing they're going to do, they're going to create new accounts, local accounts that they can log on to. Okay, so this will tell you which log, which local accounts are should be on that machine. Now you should always get rid of the admin account or not get rid of it. Um, disable the default admin accounts, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but you can go back and say, okay, these are the five accounts they had. One, two, three, four, five. Now I have seven. Okay, did I create those accounts or are those accounts something that I don't know what they are? That could be a red flag. Number two, they're going to look at scheduled tasks because what they can do is schedule a task that restarts upon boot or upon restart of the computer. So, for instance, if I go ahead and see that you're on here and I restart the computer, it'll wait for a scheduled task, an event, whatever you want it to do, and it's going to kick off again and give me another shell back again. So I'll have another complete remote control access of your machine. So you're looking at local or scheduled tasks and then processes. The reason you want to check processes is because it's very typical that someone or that a hacker will create a process that or a service that is running on your machine that you might think looks normal, but it's actually doing something else. Now, you can get very granular with these baselines. You could have it where it shows you the command line of exactly where it's running and, and all this stuff to see if it's changed. You can do all kinds of stuff. So now, okay, welcome back. So what I had to do, and I just did it off screen so you guys didn't have to wait forever, is I, I created a scheduled task. Now, when a hacker gets into a machine, typically they're going to go ahead and either A, set up backend users, B, schedule a task so that when you turn off the machine and start it back up, it's going to continue to give them access, or C, create new services, that type of thing. Now, the reason they do this is because they need to establish persistence. They might do all three. So this is just one method where you can do this and check. So what we're going to do is we already ran the command for the baseline services. As you can see in here, we have baseline scheduled tasks. So what we're going to do is we're going to do actually do the same thing. That's look, here's a scheduled task, but we're going to name it now current scheduled tasks. Now keep in mind, keep in mind that we currently changed it. So what I mean by that is when we first set it up, we set it up the machine up the exact way we wanted it. We had everything baselined. Now I've created a new task, a new scheduled task that should get picked up here. So it's going to run. Okay. So now when we hit LS, you can see that there's actually two, there's the baseline scheduled task and current scheduled tasks. There's two different scheduled tasks. So what we need to do is we need to compare them. So first thing we need to do is we need to say scheduled and you can name this whatever you want. So we'll say current and we could name it, you know, whatever. And we're going to say equals get content, uh, content, because we need to actually get the contents of it. And we're going to say current scheduled tasks. Okay. So this is the current scheduled tasks. Now we're going to say the baseline we'll say we'll just name this baseline so we have current and baseline and we're going to say instead of current scheduled tasks we're going to name this baseline scheduled tasks baseline scheduled tasks so now what we're going to do is we're going to actually compare the two automatedly and you can make this a script if you wanted so that you don't have to 
go through and actually look through every single thing and try and figure out what's different. So now we're going to say, okay, we've got the two. We're good to go. Now we need to compare them. So now we're going to say compare object. Okay. And we're going to name it. We are, we are going to compare the current with the baseline. Okay. So now we're going to compare the two current and baseline. And you can look, see this here. There's, two new scheduled tasks already that we find on the system. Number one, NP cap watchdog. Okay. That is in map. Now NP cap is a tool, but it comes with the in map suite. Now, why is that on there? Because I downloaded in map to show you guys for one, for two, this reverse shell, I named it that so that we could obviously tell what it is, but you could name it anything you wanted. You could name it, you know, remote, admin or what, whatever, whatever you want to make people think it's real. But you can see from our baseline, we have two new scheduled tasks that weren't there before. So we could instantly go, okay, something's up because we didn't, we didn't make those. So we could go to our scheduled tasks and look at what's actually running. And we could say, okay, something's wrong. This is running and it's running this application or this command prompt or whatever. We need to get rid of that. And this will at least start to show you that, hey, someone's in your system and you can start an investigation. Now, we're going to keep this series going and we're going to keep giving you guys tools to help identify things like this. But this is such a simple tool that's free, that's easy. It's on every machine. You can do the same thing on Linux, just with different commands. Everything's the same. Just when you spin up your computer or even if you know your computer's in a good state or your server's in a good state right now, take a baseline. Then save the commands. You saw they're just one liners, save the commands, run them again every month. Maybe make it part of your monthly thing. And then when you look at them, say, okay, there's this new one here, but we added an application and that's what it is. We're good. And it takes 30, 45 seconds of check time versus six months down the road. You have nothing. You get hacked. You have no idea where they're at. You don't know what services are on your machine because most people don't know what services are on their machine because it's not super common for a regular user or for a regular you know, system administrator or whatever. They should know, but it's extremely hard. Time is not that easy. It's not simple to just all day know what's going on on your machine and on your servers, that type of thing. So this is a tool that is free. It's super simple. It's easy. It's so, so useful use it guys, use it, keep hackers out of your systems and be able to detect them. So hopefully this helps you guys. Hopefully you guys like this type of content because I'm, I'm trying to give defenders more tools as well as offensive pen testers, not illegal hackers. I don't condone that. I don't like it, but I want you guys to be able to detect people. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you've done this in the past, let me know, tell me how it's worked, what kind of things have you found that type of thing. So Thanks, guys. Make sure you hit up the Discord. We love getting uh, community involvement in that as well. So hope you guys have a great day. Thanks.